In this video, we'll be covering surge testing with the Baker PPX30A power pack with the Baker DX host unit. So the first thing we wanna to do to start the surge testing is select the surge icon. Okay. And then we need to tell the DX that we're gonna be using a power pack. So we'll select the configuration button and then we have several options here. We wanna select the power pack only. And for this test, we're going to start with a three-phase test. So um, we're basically ready to go with the DX. Now we need to make sure we have the power pack configured properly. And the first thing we want to do is select the function selector switch and take it to the surge position. And you'll hear that relay pick up, uh, energizing the high voltage power supply. Okay, the next thing we want to do, since we're going to be testing, uh, we're going to test down lead one, is we need to take the test lead selector switch to the lead one position. Um, ensure you select the proper ramp rate that you want, one being the fastest, six is the slowest. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to select five. And to begin testing, we need to press the push to test button, or we can use the optional foot switch, which I have connected to the back of the PVX 30A. So again, to initiate the test, I'll depress the foot switch. We see the leads energized indicator at the top of the DX screen and the leads energized LED is illuminated on the power pack. Now we want to increase the voltage by taking the voltage control knob clockwise and then we'll look up at the screen and, and look for the waveform. And we want to continue to ramp until the test voltage is achieved. In this case, it's 12,500. And then allow just a few pulses to at least see 10 pulses. And then you're done with that particular phase. Okay, and now we're ready to move on to lead two. And make sure we take the test lead selector switch to the lead two position. We can um, reduce the ramp rate to six. Press the foot switch to initiate the test. Begin ramping the voltage. Okay, 12,500 again. Release the test, the foot switch, or the push to test button. Okay, we're we'll gonna move on to lead three. Make sure you take the function switch to the lead three position. Take the ramp rate down to six. Press the foot switch to initiate the test. And then increase the voltage with the voltage control knob by turning it clockwise. Again, we don't want to see, we want to see stability in the waveform. We don't want to see any shifts to the left, which would be indicated by a spike in the PPR graph. Once 12,500 is achieved, you stop ramping, remove the switch foot, from the foot switch, and we're completed with our surge test. We want to make sure we save the data by pressing the save icon. It's going to ask us to save the active folder and record, which in this case I will do, and we're all content. Okay, now that testing is complete, we've saved the data, we want to make sure we take that test lead selector switch to the lead's ground position to ensure that any charge that might still be present in the winding has a path to discharge, to ground. Okay, so now we're ready to perform the single phase surge test with the power pack on our single coil. Our single coil is connected, and now we want to initiate the, um, the test. Now with single phase coil testing, um, to test multiple coils and, and comparatively, we don't always want to ramp the voltage slowly to, to the test voltage. Once the test voltage is achieved and the waveform has been established, um, we can simply use the 
zero start override functionality to go directly to the test voltage um, for the coil. Uh, and this saves a lot of time when you're doing multiple coil testing. Now that is, a, that is overriding a safety feature. So to control that, we have a key and we wanna put that key in the power pack here and take that switch over from the ramp voltage to the instantaneous voltage position, uh, the ZS override position. So now we're ready to go. Function selector switch is selected. We press the push to test button or the foot switch now to initiate the testing. We'll use the voltage uh, control knob to ramp voltage to the desired test voltage. And for this one, it's gonna be 12,500 volts. We use a little bit faster rate to get there a little more expeditiously. As I get closer, I'll slow the ramp so I can get as close to that test voltage as I can. Almost there. Almost. There we go, 12,500. Now I can release the, the foot switch. All right, and you can see how the, the voltage control knob, uh, the LEDs there have indicated that we've achieved that, you know, we have that higher voltage setting and it's been ma maintained now. So I can go to my next coil, select the next coil, and then I press the push to test button, it'll immediately go right back to the same voltage each time. Now, if I wanna compare it to a reference, then I'm gonna to have to hit that reference button and a new reference is set and that'll maintain that waveform on the screen. And now when I press that push to test switch again, that voltage will go right back up and it's just perfectly matched right on top of the, the last waveform. Change the coil to the next coil, press the test switch again. And on the lower right hand corner here, we have a reference EAR graph that's being displayed. So each time I select a new coil and press the test switch, I'm surging that new coil, comparing the areas of the two waveforms, and then a small bar will be displayed there for the EAR percentage. In the upper right hand corner, we have the coil number, so it inc automatically increments. If there's some problem or some error, maybe you, you start the test, but then you don't uh, completely initiate it, you wanna back one up, you can select the delete last waveform button, and that'll delete the last coil. And then you can repeat that coil. You can see now it's coil three again. Do the surge, sorry, coil four, and it gives you the reference AAR, in this case, 1%, a little 1% deviation. And then you would just uh, continue to perform testing on each of the coils until um, you're done with all your coils. And then of course, when you're done, you wanna make sure you hit that save button, save to the active record, or select another folder and record. Now, here it's asking you to save the reference waveform. So I'm just gonna call this REF1, and hit done and it saves the data and we're all complete.